The Bridgegate scandal is still swirling this morning. He has offered his self-defense. I am not a bully. He says he didn't realize. He says he didn't know. Why didn't he know more? He doesn't know because he didn't want to know. He trusted people that lied to him, and he fired those people. He had to know right. there was all that traffic. Where was the troubleshooter then? Chris Christie went up, manned up, and, and, and took it on. I just don't get the idea that anyone could say, let's engineer a traffic jam. This is not the Mississippi River Bridge. This is the George Washington Bridge. And Using the... George Washington Bridge, a public resource to exact a political vendetta, is a crime. I had no knowledge of this. Christie's on an island. There's not a lot of Republicans coming to his support. I think it would be a mistake for me and others like me to comment on this. If those tie back into the governor in any way, it clearly becomes an impeachable offense. This week could bring answers to the growing list of questions about the George Washington Bridge scandal and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. The woman who sent this despicable email, the woman Christie repeatedly threw under the bus during his marathon press conference, could be getting a subpoena from the state assembly as soon as tomorrow. And you can bet lots of people will be interested to hear what Bridget Kelly has to say. If evidence links the governor to apparent efforts to snarl traffic for political reasons, the state assemblyman leading the investigation says Christie could be impeached. Now, there's no such evidence so far, but with all of that hanging over his head, just what will Chris Christie say at his State of the State address on Tuesday? Joining me now, Amanda Turkle, senior political reporter for the Huffington Post, and Jonathan Alter, an MSNBC political analyst. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. So I want to start with you, Amanda, because one of the things that I thought was interesting, sort of some of the many questions coming out, you know, if Bridget is uh, subpoenaed, do we think there's a chance that the government try to assert executive privilege. We saw him do that uh, in the case uh, with his education secretary and race to the top. Well, what could also happen is she might simply plead the fifth and not testify. We saw that last week with David Wildstein, the Port Authority official and Chris Christie high school friend who went before the New Jersey Transportation Committee and simply he, he said his name, he spelled his name, he said he was uh, where he was from. But beyond that, he said, I am invoking my Fifth Amendment rights to stay silent. But what is interesting about the subpoenas and why I think we should keep watching this is they're going to try to subpoena for documents. And that's how we found out that Bridget Kelly was involved. So if the New Jersey legislature gets more documents, more answers could come that way, maybe rather through, than through the testimony. And you know, Jonathan, one of the things that was interesting when you go through the emails is a number, in a number of places, people use their official email to e email an email to their private email. Right. It makes you wonder, you know, what, what's in there? Well, and why were they putting anything of any sensitivity in emails? I mean, part yeah. of the story, Karen, is the mass stupidity yeah. that is at play here. Email you is know, forever. It's not just the stupidity of, like, uh, snarling traffic, mm -hmm. um, and but the stupidity of doing it in a way uh, where they can be caught. I, I think yeah. part of, of Christie's anger, or sadness, as he calls it, you know, is how could the people who were so close to him, who he had put so much faith in, not just lie to him, but be so idiotic in their <laughs> but is uh, it, discharging of their responsibilities. Uh, but maybe that's, know, responsibilities. What maybe that's what he's really upset about, is that they were that idiotic, not so <laughs> much, or having, that they got caught, having maybe? Having talked to somebody <laughs> who's pretty close to the governor, I, I'm pretty confident in saying <laughs> that, you know, that concern about stupidity was right up there. Yeah. As far as executive privilege goes, you know, if he goes down that road, then he really is moving into Nixon land. Mm -hmm. And he really is kind of arousing suspicions that he has more to hide, that maybe there was a cover-up here. Right. That maybe even if he didn't know about this at the time, that later on he, he you know, right. was suspicious and, and instead of acting to bring the evidence out, right. uh, tried to keep it bottled up. So that's why I don't think he's going to go down that, yep. that executive privilege road. Well, and Amanda, you could see the you know, campaign ads writing themselves if he were to assert executive privilege. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And look, Chris Christie is not coming out of this looking great. I mean, he, he clearly probably doesn't want Bridget Kelly to testify simply because it will, I mean, it will raise a lot of uncomfortable questions. There still are a lot of questions out there. There is no evidence right now that Chris Christie was involved or that he knew. But there were inconsistencies in his press conference. He said that he hadn't been 
sleeping a lot for days. But he had right. said he had just heard about this the day before. So which is right? Had he heard about? Had he known about it for days, or had he just heard about it the day before? Yeah. So and and I find it hard to believe too that the deputy chief of staff was the person who was highest involved yeah. in this. So more people may be involved. And, well, and Jonathan, you and I have talked about this before. There is a pattern. There have been a number of stories about sort of the pattern that has been set. We had one, uh, another New Jersey mayor who came forward to say that they experienced a retribution. As the New Jersey Star Ledger reported, New Jersey mayors who did not endorse Chris Christie question whether they've also been targets. So there is something of a pattern. And as you and I were just talking about, the boss sets the tone. Absolutely. I mean, this is the real issue here. If this had been a different kind of governor, uh, who was a little more of a milk toast, um, then all this would be more believable. But he created a culture of uh, vindictiveness, a culture of retaliation. The New York Times has cited several examples mm -hmm. of this kind of bullying. And, you know, his problem going forward is that when he says, quote, you know, I am not a bully, there are a lot of people <laughs> in New Jersey who don't believe that. They may even like him and think he's a good governor, but they don't believe that he's right. not a bully. And so he has to worry about whether now people are not going to be afraid of him anymore in the same way that when the bully right. is finally caught uh, then all the you know uh, kids in the schoolyard who he's been beating up suddenly find their courage right. and they come forward with the stories of how he bullied them on other occasions right so th this this story could broaden into other non bridge issues you know Amanda uh, you've got the governor's got his state of the state address on Tuesday what do we think he I mean, what is he gonna say nobody's really going to care I think about his agenda as much as they'll be watching for the cues in terms of his tone his demeanor and what if anything he he says about you know this scandal and Chris Christie has really sort of marketed himself as someone who can get along with Democrats he's a Republican governor in a blue state in the Northeast and I'm sure he will want to talk a lot about his accomplishments and his ability to work with the legislature but right now the legislature really isn't very happy with him they right. are continuing these investigations so a lot of this talk about bipartisanship changing the tone in New Jersey right now those will ring hollow to many people you know the other thing we saw not surprisingly uh, this morning and in the last day or so is Repu those Republicans who have come to Christie's defense have talked about oh he's such a leader but the Benghazi comparison I mean it's, right. there is I mean what doesn't get compared to Benghazi and Bridgegate is not Benghazi and it is not the phony IRS scandal see what this is is more of the best defense is a good offense. Right. This is what Brett Schindler, who was the education commissioner in New Jersey, he said this is the key thing to understand about Chris Christie. It's true of the national Republicans who are on Meet the Press this morning as well. Right. That when they're under attack, they attack. Right. And they try to challenge other people. So, But the problem with that, that can trip you up. So what, what did Christie do in his press conference? Instead of just saying, you know, I have fired uh, Bridget Kelly, you know, accepted the resignations of others, which is what often in these kinds of scandals sure. the governor or the president will do he had to throw him off the bridge yeah. not just, <laughs> quite, not just quite put him under the bus but you know there's a danger in that because yeah. these folks have now been given immunity from prosecution if they turn states evidence bigger they, problems ahead have they been already given immunity no, or is that on not. the table so that if they be. if they could be they right they could be given immunity from prosecution. Yeah. Hey, Amanda, I want to uh, play a uh, sound of Reince Priebus from this morning and then get your reaction. Stood there for 111 minutes in an open dialogue with the press. Now, only if Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton would give us 111 seconds of that would we find out some things we want to find out about Obamacare, Benghazi, the IRS. I mean, come on, are you kidding me? Thousands of hours of testimony, thousands of pages of documents have been turned over, and this IRS scandal is not a scandal. Benghazi has already been resolved. Will they ever stop trying to compare everything to Benghazi? We will be hearing a lot more about Benghazi and the IRS scandal in the next couple of weeks than we have in months. And, I mean, Chris Christie, yes, he did hold a press conference and he did take a lot of questions from the press. He, he's very good at doing that. He does that a lot with reporters. But, again, a lot of questions that remained unanswered. Most of what we got out of that press conference was Chris Christie saying that he didn't know 
what had happened. He really still didn't completely know the full story, and he felt very sad, and in many ways he felt like the victim because his staff had lied to them. You know, so he talked to the press, but we still didn't get a ton of information. Right. And, you know, Jonathan, I mean, in this comparison of leadership of, you know, Chris Christie stood there and Barack Obama, I want to play some sound for you because I actually think, uh, you know, the president, is the guy where the buck really stops with him and if you listen to which we will what he said when one of his staff members was criticized it was a lot more credible let's go ahead and play that I'm sad that's the predominant emotion I feel right now is sadness sadness that I was betrayed by a member of my staff sadness that I had people who I entrusted with important jobs who acted completely inappropriately Sad that that's led the people of New Jersey to have less confidence in the people that I've selected. If Senator McCain and Senator Graham and others want to go after somebody, they should go after me. But when they go after the U.N. ambassador, apparently because they think she's an easy target, then they've got a problem with me. Now, I'm just saying... The President Obama came out very strong in that press conference. Obviously, the situations are different, but in terms of this idea that, you know, Christie showed real leadership and Obama doesn't, I think that comparison makes it pretty clear. Well, I mean, these, these are apples and oranges situations, but, but the point is that coming out, no matter how you perform in a press conference, is just the beginning of being able to respond to a real story. Before right. this, remember, when this story first surfaced, uh, Christie could afford, at the time, it seemed, to joke about it, you know, to use some of his other powers of persuasion to get everybody to move past this story. Sure. Uh, both Christie and Obama are, are very s skillful when they're in trouble. Remember how Obama handled the Reverend Wright situation mm -hmm. during, during the campaign. But substance eventually counts. Yes. Documents count. We now have smoking emails in this case. <laughs> right. So will a lot of this eventually pass? Yes, because scandals always pass. You mentioned the IRS scandal. Who can even really remember that? And that was only last the year. The Republican base, so, probably. <laughs> but but it, it can be very hard to rev that up if there are not ongoing revelations. If there were ongoing revelations in the IRS matter, that would still be a story. Very the true. reason this is, an, is a real danger to Chris Christie is that with the investigative machinery now in gear, there will be ongoing revelations, ongoing uh, documents that are coming out. Right. And you'll, you'll, you will see a lot of new news pegs to keep this story in the headlines in the weeks and months ahead. Absolutely. But I do, yeah. I have to say, I love how everything that happens, somehow the Republicans make it about Obamacare and Benghazi. That is a skill. Thank you, Amanda Turkle and Jonathan Alter. Thank you. Thanks.